Welcome to ESPN's coverage of college football presented by Cars.com. It's the first college football Saturday of November, and it kicks off from Chile at Overcast, Iowa City. Hawkeyes and number 15, Michigan. The Wolverines won the toss, elected to receive. Martavius Odoms and Jeremy Gallon are deep. It'll be Odoms for Michigan. And Odoms threw a seam at the 25 and then spun down at the 31. Our impact players brought to you by Jared, the Galleria of Jewelry. Denard Robinson with 11 touchdown passes and 10 touchdown runs. He will be an impact player today. Devin Gardner will get time at quarterback. Fitzgerald Tucson. Michigan's been looking for a guy to take a lead at that running back position. Last week, he stepped up big. And last week against Purdue, a career high 170 rushing yards. The coaches say he is now the number one tailback. And on first down, it's Robinson falling down and gaining only a yard. Didn't see a lot of design quarterback runs, Chris, as we watched film yesterday of their win against Purdue. And Robinson that time on the run, getting just a yard. There's Devin Gardner, the backup quarterback. We'll see some packages where he's in the game and Denard is lined up at receiver. Right there was kind of last year's Michigan where you had to read option. They're kind of trying to transition away from that into a more traditional offense, which makes Denard a little less effective. And we'll talk more about that as we go along as Robinson pitches here to Toussaint and he's out to the 35 yard line a gain of three on the play so it brings up third down Toussaint a sophomore from Youngstown Ohio as you look at Brady Hope wears short sleeves no matter whether it's 90 or 9 so even for that Michigan Ohio State game and maybe uh, if they're in a cold weather bowl game, you'll see them wearing short sleeves. First year as the Michigan head coach already matched the Wolverine win total from all of last year at seven. They are tied for the lead in the Legends Division with Nebraska and Michigan State. Robinson on third and five. And into double coverage, well overthrown, trying for round three. Three and out for Michigan. The start for I was exactly what you want to get the crowd into this to get energy. Now Michigan will be punting into a little bit of a win. So hopefully you create some type of field position. Interesting that Iowa ran a nice little stunt right there, which was able to pressure Robinson into the overthrow. He has struggled throwing the ball this year. 55% completion rate. Will Hogger up the punter for Michigan here in fourth and five. Micah Hyde is the deep man for Iowa. And that thing gets hung up in the air. It's windy, about 15 mile an hour winds right now, and it's fair caught. So Iowa's turn with the ball. Dave Pash, Chris Spielman, Urban Meyer has been designated for assignment. He played minor league baseball, so he knows what that means. Just kidding, Urban. We look forward to having you back with us next week. Chris, what about Michigan's offense and Denard Robinson? What do you expect from them today? Well, they're kind of transitioning into a more of a traditional offense, and that's why you see Devin Gardner. And the more that Denard Robinson's under center, the less effective he becomes and if you ask any defensive coordinator out there they always look for a way to stop Denard Robinson well the offense stops Denard Robinson because they take the running threat away from him when he's under center and it seems like with each game Gardner is getting more opportunities as Iowa runs on first down and Marcus Coker gets about three yards he rushed for 252 last week for Iowa impact players brought to you by Jared the Galleria of Jewelry James Vandenberg the quarterback quietly having a terrific season for the Hawkeyes See right there, Marcus Coker, tough, hard-nosed runner, over 230 yards. And Marvin McNutt, six foot four, a big target that can run and very dangerous with run after catch. They'll run Coker again, and he runs right in the Mike Martin, the outstanding nose man for Michigan, who last week had a couple of sacks and a safety against Purdue, the first for Michigan in eight years. He played his best game last week, and his biggest asset is the quickness in getting off the ball. You see the chop block trying to come in from the corner by Scherf. Mike Martin showing balance and get off. It's all so important for that inside defensive tackle position to get off on the ball fast. You can beat the blocker to the point of attack. And forces Michigan, or Ohio, uh, Iowa rather, into a third and eight. Vandenberg with time, and he's got Keenan Davis for a first down. And Davis across midfield. All the way to the Michigan 30-yard line.
back from injury right here Keenan Davis on just a little crossing route and you're matching up with Demons the middle linebacker and that's no match Demons has to try to get in his way and disrupt the route or make him go around so he can get recovery help right there a good play call by Ken O'Keefe and they're so excited to have Keenan Davis back because it helps Marvin McNutt on the other side had an ankle injury did not have him in the loss to Minnesota last week 44 yard pass play there first down at the 30 play fake for Vandenberg over the middle McNutt with the catch to the 10 a gain of 20 49 catch for McNutt on the season anytime you can get this type of look and protection off the play action holding the linebackers in which they shouldn't because there were high hats by the offensive lineman but Vandenberg throwing the fastball right to McNutt and I love Dave how a receiver goes and snags that ball with his hands very good with rack and he's learned that remember he was a quarterback that has become an outstanding NFL prospect at receiver first and goal for the Hawkeyes here's Coker off the right edge down to the five yard line Martin on the stop Michigan number one in the country in red zone defense and Iowa has struggled of late in red zone offense two missed field goals and a fumble last week now Michigan's allowed only 12 red zone touchdowns but three of those were against Michigan State the lone loss for the Wolverines this year See right out in Iowa here with Coker who's a power inside runner attack Michigan right at their heart to set the tempo for the whole game. It's Coker again, left side this time, and Coker is in. Touchdown, Iowa. <laughs> Iowa made it look pretty easy against Michigan's defense on that drive. That's the power of Coker. Running through arm tackles. It will not get it done. You better put a hat and shoulder pads on that young man, or he'll put you on his highlight film in a heartbeat. 32 carries a week ago, four on that drive, including his 11th touchdown run. The point after makes it 7 0 Iowa. And the Hawkeyes looking to rebound after an embarrassing loss to Minnesota last week, off to a great start at home against Michigan. After a six play 76 yard drive that took just three minutes Iowa takes an early lead Michigan Nebraska Michigan State tied atop the Legends division at three and one Iowa not out of it at two and two with a home game next week against Michigan State road game to close out the year at Nebraska Michigan with a game at Illinois next week and then home games with Nebraska and Ohio State to finish the regular season. Mike Meyer kicking it off for the second time. Odoms and Gallon are deep for the Wolverines. It's Odoms after a short kick. And he will not reach the 25. First down. Robinson under center. Here's Tucson picking a hole. And a good running lane to the 42 for a gain of about seven or eight. James Morris on the tackle. Well, again, in Michigan is going to what Brady Hoke wants to go to as far as offensively speaking, and now Borges. And that's not a spread option running quarterback type of offense. And so they have a little bit of in that in their scheme, but they're getting away from that more and more as the season progresses. And they're asking Bernard Robinson just to be a game manager when he's a game breaker. You look what he did last year, set the NCAA record for quarterback rushing yards. Tucson picks up the first down. Got 20 carries last week, Tucson did. Tackle made by Daniel and Thomas Nardo for Iowa. First down, Michigan. 75, Michael Schofield filling in nice for Barnum on the pool right there, getting his shoulders turned up field and springing Tucson for an extra three yards. Going from tackle to guard. Good job right there. Very nice. Michigan 10th in the country in rushing, about 245 a game. Robinson looking for Hemingway. That's the second drop for Junior Hemingway. Sean Prater on the coverage. It's second and 10. And conceptually, it's perfect. Why corners off? Get Hemingway out in space. Big body that can run. And again, his eyes are not following the football into his hands. You see, he start there, and he sees Prater coming up, and he just took a little sneak peek at Prater. 
Just catch the ball, you're going to get hit anyway. Follow it into your hands. Play fake for Robinson. Looking downfield instead, the underneath throw to the tight end, Koger. And he breaks one tackle and pushed out of bounds right at the first down marker by James Morris. Got to like that, uh, Robinson there, right? Nothing deep, so make the underneath throw. Yeah, that's another thing I think where he's growing to right here. Take a look at his eyes. In the games that we've watched, Dave, he's stored, stared down his receiver too much. Right here, he's le looking down the field. Nothing open deep. Come back to the secondary receiver. Throw short. That's growth in the drop back quarterback. And he gets the first down. So a fresh set of downs for the Wolverines at the 27 yard line. And Devin Gardner back in the game at quarterback. Second time he's been out there. And Denard Robinson will line up to his right. The Iowa coaches, uh, including head coach Kirk Ferentz, upset at the spot there. They felt that. And short. Now, now they're saying that they were short. They just announced second down, though. It should be third down. Should be third and short. Because the first down pass was incomplete to Hemingway. The next play was the pass to Koger. Yes. So it should be third down. And that's what Kirk Ferentz is saying. And they finally changed it. So it is third down and one. Gardner goes to the sideline. Robinson goes back to the quarterback spot. Michigan one of three on third down. They come in seventh in the country in third down conversion. Toussaint has the first down. Gain of close to seven yards on third down and one. Bernstein with the stop downfield for Iowa. Lead blockers are keys to short yardage first downs. Hopkins number 33 on the lead on Nielsen. Watch this. It's a good job by Nielsen stalemating, but Hopkins does a good job in sustaining. And as a linebacker, when you take on a lead, you never want to give one for one. That's exactly what Nielsen did. Patience by Tucson results in the first. Here's Tucson again, looking for the cutback. It's there. Tucson down to the 10, a gain of 11 and a first down. Making a lateral cut is difficult. I mean, a lateral cut on a 90. Watch the lateral cut going from side to side. That's vision and balance and athleticism right there. Then you add the burst to it and a little bit of speed. Tucson has really taken advantage of the opportunities he's gotten there. Yeah, you think about what he did last week, the most rushing yards in a game since Mike Hart in 2006. And Robinson keeping ripped down by Broderick Bins for a loss on the play. Seven and a half tackles for a loss for senior Broderick Bins. Reading the defensive end is the concept of the spread option. Bernard Robinson's gonna put in his vision Bins. If Bins chases the ball carrier, He's supposed to then keep it. Bins did a good job of sliding and coming off. That was a bad read by Denard Robinson. A good job of Bins playing disciplined defense. Second and goal at the Iowa Five. Play fake for Robinson. Nobody to throw to. Robinson staying in the pocket and now unloading for a touchdown. It's Toussaint out of the backfield. He stayed in the pocket. There was no way he was leaving. And he found Toussaint, eventually got away from a defender. Robinson's 12th touchdown pass of the year. Patience. Not running it in. And the last year he would have, right? <laughs> Absolutely. Have Absolutely. He could have ran it in. Oh, they, they had trouble with a snap. Dillio running around is taken down. It's a failed conversion. Micah Hyde made the tackle. Dillio, the holder, had trouble 
after getting the snap for the kicker Brendan Gibbons still a good bounce back by Michigan after Iowa turns it over on downs the Wolverines march down the field and Denard Robinson with a touchdown pass finding Fitzgerald Tucson in the end zone but then a botched extra point snap looked good Dilio just dropped it 12 play 61 yard scoring drive it took five and a half minutes after Iowa turned it over on downs and Fitzgerald Toussaint who has become the featured back for Michigan with a touchdown catch Denard Robinson staying in the pocket about eight or ten seconds everybody covered nobody though can cover that long and Toussaint eventually got open here's Kanziri on the return for Iowa crosses the 20 Chile here at Kinnick Stadium a Legends Division battle Iowa two and two Michigan three and one in conference play the Wolverines in a three-way tie for first place going into this weekend with Nebraska and Michigan State and Iowa will run the football on first down it's Coker out near another first down at the 34 closing seconds of the opening quarters Iowa leading by one here in Iowa City Conference update brought to you by Dr. Pepper 10. Michigan, Nebraska, Michigan State all tied atop the Legends Division at 3 and 1. Iowa one game back at 2 and 2. In the Leaders Division, Penn State at 5 and 0, oh, but the Nittany Lions still have to play Nebraska at home, at Ohio State, and at Wisconsin. The Buckeyes with a nice rally to get to 2 and 2, but tough games left and as Reese Davis told you they're trailing Indiana early. First down, I just said the, uh, didn't mean to say Iowa, I just gave it away. Here's Coker, big run, as Coker is across the 45 and out near midfield. A gain of about 27 for Marcus Coker. Whenever you have a big run, it's usually somebody's in the wrong gap. Let's take a look at what happens right here. You see Desmond Morgan right there, two guys in one gap. When you have two guys in one gap, that's the problem. Desmond Morgan's a true freshman, struggled a little bit, starting to turn it on. But if you're going to sneak underneath the play to make a play, you better make the play. In other words, you can't be two guys in one gap or you're going to leave Marcus Coker running through the races. Play fake, Vandenberg rolling out and throwing on the run. It's a strike to McNutt to the Michigan 37. It's a 14-yard gain. McNutt on the season 12th in the country in receiving yards per game. Okay, if I'm Iowa, I go a little bit of tempo right now. You got him guessing. First down run, first down pass. Maybe tempo it up a little bit. You see McNutt doing a good job of working back to the football, catching it with his hands. And Countess has given him a lot of room. So that intermediate route, about 15 to 13 yards, is going to be open because of the threat of McNutt going deep. And Vandenberg, we talked about him when we saw him against Penn State. Not a lot of people talk of him amongst the best quarterbacks in the Big Ten, but his numbers are. He's second in the league in passing yards, third in efficiency. Coker straight ahead. And this time he's wrapped up by Desmond Morgan. Already 10 carries for Coker, who had 32 rushes a week ago. And Demons did a nice job, too. I talk about not giving one for one as a linebacker took on the offensive lineman, defeated that blocker, and made the play. Held his gap responsibility, like we always talk about, but not giving one for one. Shedding, hitting and getting, or getting and hitting. Seem the other seem to be a better coach defense this year too than they were last year. More sound. You agree with that? Oh, absolutely. And that's a reflection of Greg Madison and Brady Hoke. And not a lot of running room for Coker. They track him down. Martin tripped him up. And so Coker gets maybe a half yard. It brings up third down and long. Mike Martin last week had his best ball game, Dave, and. Brady Hoke coaches that position. He coaches the nose guard position. He's his personal coach. And I talked about Brady during the week. So Mike had his best game. He said, and I go, you're coaching him? He goes, yeah. I go, what'd you do? You kind of back off coaching him? That's why he had his best game. But he's coming out and he's starting to get his rhythm, Dave. He's a solid football player and well respected by offensive coaches around the league. About a 52 or 53 yard field goal try from here into the wind. So on third and seven, Vandenberg, and it's dropped at the 28. 
McNutt normally sure handed near the first down marker could not hang on so it's fourth down we'll see what Iowa decides to do here they got about seven yards to go I think they come right back to McNutt if they decide to go to it we see Vandenberg right on time and on target and throwing a fastball and that's the guy that has to make the play that would be about a 52 yard field goal Meyer his long in the year is 50 but he's kicking into a little bit of a win so they're going to go for it here on fourth down and seven they already went for it on fourth and one and failed in the first quarter well his comfort level is number seven McNutt up top of the screen Vandenberg looking for McNutt instead finds Martin Manley and it's a first down grab with a 26 yard line tackled by Courtney Avery move the chains for the Hawkeyes oh, patience and poise sets apart quarterbacks so you're going to see that we're going to have a little in and out McNutt's going to come here we're going to work off a little bit of pick and watch Vandenberg stay patient sure he's looking for McNutt on the crossing route but then you see the read route by Martin Manley patience and poise for a quarterback then deliver the outcut which is a difficult throw to make but when he has that arm that puts a little steam on that football to get it out there from the Michigan 26 Vandenberg to the air again and the pass is broken up by Countess at the 10 defending Keenan Davis Countess who replaces Troy Wolfolk who was an outstanding player but had injuries last year and this year Wolfolk moved to safety because they want to get Countess on the field despite being a true freshman That's the direction they're going Desmond Morgan a true freshman Countess a true freshman and that kind of shows you what they felt about the talent last year at Michigan on defense when you have three true freshmen that are major contributors for the Wolverine defense this year second and ten it's Coker straight ahead big running lane and Coker has the first down to the 12 well, Michigan stopping Iowa on first down yet the Hawkeyes are still getting plays big plays on second and third down again right here it's a good job of a lead block and Mike Martin's in position to make the play but he overruns the play and Marcus Coker is a one cut and hit it guy and once he gets those shoulders turned downfield you better bring a neck roll and an attitude to bring him down over a thousand yards now on the season 19 year old sophomore first down at the 13 for Iowa they picked up a fourth and seven earlier on this drive Coker again met by Demons and then Kovacs comes in to clean him up at the 11 yard line it's a gain of a couple and what this forces Michigan to do is bring up a safety or an eighth man in the box to slow down the run when you do that then your corners either have to play a tight man or play off which then the result is to get Marvin McNutt out there in space one on one and we've seen McNutt out in space we've seen Davis as well we've seen drops in this game so now it's been open. The reason why they went for it on fourth and six. Martin Manley got a cushion when it was open. Right there's McNutt again. Favorite target. Play fake for Vandenberg. And Vandenberg throwing underneath. It's caught and down at the one yard line is the tight end Fedorowicz. It'll be first and goal for Iowa. Everything off the play action. When you have success, you're able to do this. Fedorowicz is down before the ball crosses the line of scrimmage but Vandenberg understands high to low what I mean by high to low he's looking to McNutt first he's high he's not there he knows he has Fedorowicz coming across on the bootleg and they're going to pound it right up the middle here first and goal at the one no play fake and a wide open man in the end zone is Herman touchdown Iowa Second touchdown catch for Herman. And Iowa leads it 13 to 6 with the point after coming. Well, we talk about players getting a rhythm. Ken O'Keefe has his rhythm, the offensive coordinator for Iowa. Great call on first down. Usually that's reserved for second down. Point after makes it 14 to 6. And Vandenberg with 18 touchdown passes on the year completed a big fourth and seven on that drive and it leads to a one yard touchdown pass to Herman. Ken O'Keefe going over the 
And plays. We talk about he's got his rhythm going right now. Run and pass has Michigan on their heels a little bit defensively. Short kickoff and fielded by Jeremy Gallon. And Gallon is nailed at the 30 yard line. Jeremy. Michigan ball when we come back, trailing 14 to 6. Michigan down 14 to 6. Midway through the second quarter. And here is Fitzgerald, Tucson. Excellent patience and gets a gain of about five yards out to the 36. Tanner Miller on the tackle. And Iowa honoring veterans today. Changing its helmet look. You see the Tiger Hawk emblem on the right side, red, white, and blue, honoring those that are currently serving the military. On the left side, normally there is a uh, that Tiger Hawk, as they call it, emblem, but they removed it today in honor of those women and men who died serving the military. Here's Robinson on design run. I haven't seen a lot of this lately and got nowhere to go. Tyler Nielsen all over him. It's a loss of a yard or two on the play. First of all, there's no play action. It's the direct snack to Bernard Robinson. In order for this to work, you have to be able to execute your blocks. Right there, Nielsen works off a block of a wide receiver trying to crack on him, have a running back try to crack on him and block him. It barely touched him. He's too good. And the thing I liked about that, he defeated the blocker with his hands and not his shoulder pads. Meanwhile, just seven rushing yards for Denard Robinson. Averaging about three yards a carry the last three games. He'll roll out here and throw complete for a first down to Hemingway to the 47-yard line. A gain of 12 or 13 there. You see the evolution of Denard Robinson into a quarterback, a pure quarterback. Right there, he probably could have tucked it and got the first down. But his eyes stayed downfield and he stayed patient, allowing him a way to do his work and create separation between himself and the defensive back covering him. Hemway that time did not body catch it, Dave. Went up and snagged it with the hands. Robinson leads the nation in yards per completion. A lot of big plays in the passing game, believe it or not, for Michigan. First down in the Wolverine 46. Play action. Robinson looking to throw again and going deep. Single coverage down there, and it's incomplete. Going for Roundtree, a flag. Prater was defending, and a penalty flag likely for pass interference on Iowa. It's a bang bang type call. There is no foul on the play for defensive pass interference. Second down. Well, they wave it off. Again, initially live. I, I thought he had his left arm on the arm of Roundtree. Let's see here as the ball is in the air. Now it looks like pretty good coverage. Yeah, he had his he had his right arm on him, right there on the back on his back. And that's a close call. That's a bang bang, so that can go either way. And they're doing hand fighting down there, which you know they're gonna allow it, allow it. And they did. To me, I thought he might have got there a little bit early, but I could certainly see why they didn't call it. There's Smith on second down, and he may have run into Toussaint, a teammate, and went flying through the air for a gain of one or two. Dominic Alvis was there for Iowa. Let's see if he tripped on the Hawkeye or on a teammate. Fitzgerald Toussaint is 195 pounds, so he's not going to be able to move people when he blocks. And that was nice by Kirksky using the blocker to fill his gap and make the tackle with the blocker's body. But where Michigan's successful running the football is inside. Right now, they have no success running on the edges. Iowa blitzing on third down and 10. It's picked up. Robinson in trouble, though. And he lost the ball. Recovered by the Hawkeyes. Tyler Nielsen comes up with a fumble recovery. A terrible mistake by Robinson. Why not just take the sack here? Well, because you're Denard Robinson, and right there, the mistake is trying to brace himself with the ball in his hands. Fatal error. Relatively speaking, of course, and Nielsen not giving up on a play, missing a sack opportunity, getting off the ground and recovering. But Nard Robinson feels like he can do anything. And he almost got away with it to buy time to throw the football. 
Security is number one, Dave. Always ball security. Iowa with great field position at the 31, and here comes Marvin McNutt, and he can throw the ball an next quarterback. Instead, he gets good yardage running across the 30 and out of bounds at the 24-yard line. It's a seven-yard gain. Pushed out by Brandon Hawthorne of Michigan. Well, no doubt the original attempt was to throw the ball to Keenan Davis down the field. Number eight, J.T. Floyd was not fooled, played his responsibility, and they were able to stretch it out. But that's what I, Iowa does. They recruit a lot of ex-quarterbacks to fill in their skill positions. Chad Greenway was a quarterback and became, obviously, a terrific linebacker, first-round draft pick. Dallas Clark was as well. Here's Coker, and down he goes. Van Bergen got off a block, and the three-year starter makes the play for a loss, so it brings up third and six. Uh, if you're playing inside on a defensive tackle, you're not always going to make the play, but you can cause or disrupt, and it's all about the get off. Watch number 53, Bam, Van Bergen, hit it inside and quick. He's on a little bit of a pinch move. He catches big number seven, seven Riley Reef stepping outside. He's going inside, and what I loved about it was the change of direction. Plant with the left, straight down the line of scrimmage to meet the ball carrier at the point of attack. Vandenberg. And it's a wide receiver screen to McNutt. Broken ankle tackle, but still short of the first down. Countess made the stop. We'll see if Iowa kicks here. It's about a 40, 41 yard attempt. Or if they go for it again on four down. They're, they've gone for it twice, but this time they're going to bring on the field goal team. Now, if you're looking at the flags, we understand that on the field the wind swirls, but if you're looking at the stadium man, the flags, the wind is blowing into the face of the field goal team of Iowa. Be a 42-yard try. Mike Meyer has missed four times this year. He missed two in the first half of their loss to Minnesota last week. A good attack onto the Hawkeyes. Eight-point lead here. And he puts it through. 17 to 6. Iowa leads Michigan by 11. And that will end the first half. Denard Robinson with a fumble and an interception in the red zone and also a botched extra point by the Wolverines. Let's go to Quinn Kesnick down on the field. Earlier there was a flag and what appeared to be pass interference. I, I know you wanted the call. You, you spoke to the referee. What did he say? Well, I said it wasn't. I mean, yeah, we want the call. You know, we want them all. You know how coaches are. How do you best describe the play of, of Denard Robinson? He's got a fumble. He's got a pick. He's playing well. I mean, shoot, this is a team. It's not one guy. Thanks, Coach. Thanks. Robinson Quinn held at 10 rushing yards and 64 passing yards with two turnovers. But Michigan is 2-0 this year when it trails at the half. Now to Reese Davis in the studio in the Bud Light Halftime Report. Iowa trying to stay alive for the Legends Division Championship and hand Michigan at second loss. It's 17-6, Hawkeyes at the half. Dave Pash alongside Chris Spielman. By the way, Urban Meyer called at halftime from his uh, trailer in Tuscaloosa, said he loves the corduroy sport coat. He wants to wear it when he rejoins us next week. Absolutely. After you borrow it, you can give it to him then. <laughs> Two things. I know they want to get Gardner in the game. I just think they're, they're picking a poor time to put him in the game. After there's a big play made by the Michigan offense and Denard Robinson, Gardner comes in, which I think throws off the rhythm, plus Michigan uh, can't fumble the ball in the red zone and give away points in the red zone by turning itself over. And Iowa will start the second half with the ball. Here's Bernstein on the kick return for the Hawkeyes. And he is cut down at the 25-yard line. Let's get out of the field and check in with Quinn Kesnick. We spoke with Iowa coach Good Kirk Ferentz. Most impressed with his defense's ability to contain and bottle up Denard Robinson in running situations. He also pointed to the emotion and energy that his group is playing with. I tell you, you would never guess that this Iowa team lost last week in Minnesota from the second they've taken the field today. Great support from their fans, good energy level, and they are winning in the trenches with a certain physicality. But they had an 11-point lead, Quint, last week and lost it in the fourth quarter to Minnesota. They start the third up by 11. Michigan had a botch extra point in that first half. And it's going to be play action for Vandenberg on first down. And he'll take off and slide across the 30. Gain of about six yards. Our game track is brought to you by Bud Light. Iowa with close to 200 yards total offense and Robinson with 74 total yards but just 10 rushing yards Vandenberg 
who again continues to impress only four picks on the year 18 touchdown passes and of course Michigan comes into today tied with Michigan State and Nebraska for the top spot in the Legends division but Iowa just a game back. They'll run on second down and Marcus Coker with 32 carries a week ago with 16 rushes now for 83 yards Troy Wolf on the tackle. Well, every defense comes into the game trying to stop the run. The problem Michigan's having is they stop one, they stop one, and you have Coker break one for 10, 15, 20, and that allows Iowa's offense to be balanced, and that's when they're most effective, when they're balanced because they can run and throw on first down, and it keeps the winged helmets guessing on what they're going to do. And they're getting themselves in manageable second and third down situations. Play action. Vandenberg setting up and gets sacked at the 30 yard line. It's Will Heininger who makes the play for the Wolverines. A loss of about nine yards. This is effort right here. Heininger coming in from the outside is getting down to keep fighting and splitting double teams. And that's where Vandenberg right here, you see number 39, keep working on an inside move. Has to make a decision. That was a play action route and an all too deep route. If it's not there, you feel the heat, throw the ball away, preserve it down. Now it's second and 18. And Coker with no running room, bottled up at the 34. Gain of a couple. Jabril Black is there, so it brings up third down and 16 to go. A better job by the true freshman, Desmond Morgan, number 44. First half, we saw him give one for one. What I mean, he gave himself up for a blocker that time. Young Desmond took on the blocker, came off the blocker, and made a tackle in the hole. He's going to be a good football player as he continues to grow and develop. Made his second start last week against Purdue. Had a fumble recovery in the loss against Michigan State. Iowa, one of five on third down. They do have a fourth down conversion in this game. And they got to get, though, to midfield here. Screen down. Play clock at one. Vandenberg in trouble again. Down he goes. It's Craig Rowe for his fourth sack of the year, and that forces an Iowa punt. You and I were talking at the break about getting the fight started. Michigan got the fight started in the second half by creating this punt and lack of yardage for Iowa. Now their offense has to get some type of rhythm and get into a groove. Guthrie to punt. Jeremy Gallon. And returnable gallon from the 35 yard line and steps out at the 39 decent starting field position for Michigan's offense. And Thenard Robinson turned it over twice in that first half but did have some big plays and when they brought Gardner in the game Gardner was in there for four plays they averaged two yards on the four total plays prior each time previous play before Gardner entering they averaged 14 yards of play and then they pulled Robinson and brought in the backup and not only that you put him in, in difficult situations second and third long which is not his strength no run Tucson on first down and he gets out to the 47 for about seven yards brought down by Tanner Miller you know this is what we talked about Michigan going into the half where were they effective running the football right up the middle and you got a guy that's starting to get his rhythm as the season goes on in Fitzgerald Tucson. Get him involved in the ball game. You're getting good lead blocking by Stephen Hopkins, Stephen Hopkins. And that's where you can create this type of formation where you can run play action with Denard Robinson. It'll be a straight handoff. Tucson hit in the backfield. Nowhere to go. First man there was Dominic Alvis, so it brings up third down and short. What are you expecting here? Well, I'm going to go a drop back pass, but in the locker room, I'm going to tell Denard Robinson not to wait for a receiver to get open. If your first option is, isn't there, find a throwing lane, turn it into a running lane, and burst through the hole. That's when he's most effective as a runner. When not, not on design calls, but when he drops back the pass, don't sit around in the pocket. You're not built for that. You're built to use your feet and scramble for the first. They're going to line Robinson up in the gun on third and two. And 
It's a design quarterback run and great patience by Robinson. And he is out of bounds near the 31. Boy, he turned on the Jets in a heartbeat. Looked like he might get tackled for a loss and gets over 20 yards. Well, he's letting his block set up. First of all, he's ahead of his blocker. So there he lets Tucson do his work. Take a little shuffle step backward then what all great backs have are all great runners of the football. They have that extra gear which they can kick in and call. First down at the 20. They turned it over in the red zone the last time they had the ball. And not much running room here as Tucson is drilled by Sean Prater. Second and 10. Sean Prater keeps holding his uh, hand up to his ear like he wants to cheer. Just do your job. There you go. There's your cheer. Just keep doing it. He's a good football player. You don't need to hear the cheer or ask for the cheer. If they want to cheer, they'll cheer. First team All Big Ten last year, Sean Prater. Had good corners over the years here at Iowa. Mario Spive is now in the NFL of the Lions recently. Second and long, just inside the 20 yard line. Play fake for Denard. And Robinson's pass is deflected incomplete. Broderick Bins has done that three times today. And it was one on one Bins with Robinson. And the defensive lineman made the play. A couple of things. Bins is disciplined. Red hair is not going to chase. They're going to come upfield and contain Denard Robinson. There's nobody open. And this is what I'm talking about. If I'm coaching Denard Robinson, there's nothing there, Denard. Go ahead and use your feet to get positive yards. You're not going to find a receiver every single time and bends with his third block of the day. And, and you can make him miss. It's one on one with the <laughs> defensive lineman. He's going to make a miss. Especially when the defensive lineman is coming in trying to get his hands and tip the football. Robinson on third and nine facing pressure and the ball flutters into the air and it's caught by Smith. He's short of the first down though at the 15 yard line. Tanner Miller creamed Robinson. It's still a completion but Michigan's going to bring on the field goal team. The weakness of the Michigan's offense is recognizing blitz. Here comes the blitz right here by Miller off the edge. Robinson does not see him until late. Got, got away with one. A ball hanging in the air like that usually doesn't get picked. It usually gets picked. So Brendan Gibbons, who is 6 of 8 on the year, a 32-yard attempt. Michigan's kickers last year were 4 of 14. But Gibbons makes this one, and it's a one-possession game, 17 to 9. Iowa on top, midway through the third. The visitors locker room here at Kinnick Stadium which is painted pink. You remember that Chris? Actually um, I don't remember it before a game. I remember hearing about it that I went into the game and I was a little psychotic back then Dave a little focused and after the game somebody said ah, what do you think about these pink locker rooms? I said, Fine you put pretty butterflies up there all the same to me. Beautiful. I don't remember it. But you said psychotic back then as if <laughs> that somehow changed as this kick goes out of bounds. Take a look at this week's BCS standings brought to you by Allstate. Of course, LSU, Alabama 1 and 2, and they go at it tonight. Oklahoma State, right now third in the BCS standings. Stanford, followed by Boise State. But the teams currently, Chris, with one loss. Is there anybody there that still has a chance to get into the BCS championship picture? I'll get your answer after this play. Caught by Davis on the right side of the field, and he gets about seven yards. You know, a team that has that opportunity that will have Stanford in a, in a week or two would be Oregon. Well, I think it's an explosive, and very, very talented football team that can beat anybody on any given day. There's Denard throwing the football. I was waiting to see him do that last time. We'll see if he warmed up and ready to go. Meanwhile, second and two for Iowa, leading 17 to 9. Final minute of this quarter and Coker gets stoned but boy he's strong he just blew through that tackle attempt by Desmond Morgan and picks up the first down. Coker's a 230 pound back. He's been the only runner today at that position. Mikhail McCall a freshman who has missed most of the year with a broken ankle. We thought we were going to see him some today but they've kept Coker in there as the featured back. It's amazing what coaches say on Friday as far as guys <laughs> playing. Then what happens on Saturday especially when a true freshman is involved. 
McCall does have a bright future here for the Hawkeyes, but that guy is running with toughness and power. The one possession game, but Michigan, for now, without its star quarterback, Denard Robinson, trailing on the road 17-9. Ah, November is here in Iowa City. It was supposed to be about 60 today. I don't think we've hit 50 <laughs> as Iowa's on top 17-9. So we start the fourth quarter. Hawkeyes with a first down on their 49-yard line. Run play to Coker. Straight on for about three yards. Let's check in with Quinn for the latest on Denard Robinson, the Michigan quarterback. Yeah, Dave, during that last break, I was standing about five yards away from Michigan head coach Brady Hoke when trainer Paul Schmidt walked up to the head coach and said, Denard is good to go. So you can expect to see number 16 back in at quarterback when Michigan gets the ball back. Question is, when he gets the ball back, will there be still down one score or will the lead be extended by Iowa? Robinson the first half also Michigan had a botched extra point today Receiver went in motion the wrong way Vandenberg now changing things up play clock at one they get the play away Vandenberg to throw and it's broken up incomplete it's the true freshman Blake Countess defending McNutt back to throw Vandenberg on third down and McNutt before he caught the pass was already there with JT Floyd defending, and it's a first down for the Hawkeyes. The big time play wide receiver will always go away from trips, so you get the one on one matchup, is what you want right here. And this ball is delivered before he comes out of his cut against Floyd number eight. Vandenberg has trust, McNutt has trust, and right there was great hands because that ball was on top of him, and it's called quick hands and go up and snatch it with strong hands. 54 catches now on the season for Marvin McNutt. Six today. First down at the 32 of Michigan. Coker miles forward for about a yard. Mike Martin leading the way for Michigan. Again, the Wolverines have, have done a decent job on first down. It's just giving up big plays on second and third down. They've also allowed a fourth and seven conversion earlier in the game. That's been the miscues. It's the turnovers. One, they turned it over, gave Iowa the ball in, in the red zone. Then going in for points, they had a turnover, taking points off the board. So you're talking about a possible 10 point swing. Meanwhile, Vandenberg has been very steady again. Comes in second in the Big Ten in passing. He'll throw here on second down and eight. And McNutt can't get away from Thomas, who got enough of him to bring him down a couple of yards shy of a first down third and short he'll go back to Coker here and just pound it or play action I think you go back to Coker here then you make the decision are you going to use two downs to get the first down or you trust Meyer enough to kick the field goal to take it back to a two possession football game if you want to play safe you pound Coker be about a 42 yard attempt on fourth down Meyer already made a 42 yard third down and two It's going to be a pass play all the way, and Vandenberg hits McNutt, and he's got the first down. Floyd defending McNutt's seventh catch of the day. And that's uh, again. I mean, you're trusting your playmakers and your quarterback to make a difficult throw, a half roll, but he's throwing on the out and going to the playmaker and a sure-handed guy and his comfort level in Marvin McNutt. That's trust between the offensive coordinator and his two big-time playmakers. Vandenberg and McNutt and, and Ken O'Keefe's calling a great game today by the way not to go unnoticed eighth catch of the day for McNutt O'Keefe in his 13th year came in with Ference and Norm Parker defensive coordinator is Coker looking for a cutback lane breaking tackles runs over a defender Kovacs and he's inside the 15 got about seven on that pickup He leads the Big Ten in rushing, ninth in the country at 121 yards a game. Coker today at 102. It's his sixth 100-yard game of the year. Probably one of the few recruits that made the long drive from Washington, D.C. out to Iowa. Dave. He literally drove. You're not kidding. <laughs> Second and three. 
But Michigan was late getting a defender over on McNutt. Vandenberg going in zone. Threw it away. The door with the tight end. But didn't it look like Michigan was late getting a corner up top there to defend McNutt? It did, but McNutt did not come off the ball. McNutt will walk off the football. Watch this. They're late. Now watch him just kind of walk off the football here. Well, he's not expecting anything. So I don't know if there was a miscommunication or if I'm an NFL scout and I'm seeing he's not selling his route every single time. I mean, he has to sell every single route to draw everybody to him. That would have maybe left the safety on him and the tight end open in the middle of the field. It'll be Coker running right, and he's got the first down and the touchdown. Second touchdown today for Marcus Coker, his 12th of the season. And Iowa leads it 23 to 9 with a point after coming. Point after is good, it's a 15 point Iowa lead. Sealing the edges and kicking out. Watch what I'm talking about. There's this kick on the seal, the kick out by Rodgers. Coker, quietly, but effectively, into the end zone. Iowa, just under 11 minutes away from bowl eligibility, and the Hawkeyes trying to keep hopes alive of a Big Ten championship. They lead Michigan 24-9. And Marcus Coker has outrushed the entire Michigan team. And this Wolverine squad came in averaging 245 on the ground, 10th in the country. They've got 93 today. How about Robinson? 32 rushing yards. He's got 140 rushing yards over his last three games. He had that in one game last year. Odom's on the return. Breaks one tackle and gets it out to the 43. Well, meanwhile, Junior Hemingway Reese with a reception to midfield. A gain of seven or eight yards. So Denard Robinson is back in the game. He missed the last series. And don't forget, Michigan does have the ability to score in a hurry with the playmakers and athletes they have on their offense. Robinson on second and short. And he's going to go deep for Hemingway and overthrow him. So it's third down and two, coverage by Micah Hyde. Robinson, 9 of 17. He got hit on a pass that fluttered in the air, was caught by a teammate, Vincent Smith, and they were able to get a field goal, but. That's about the only good break he's got. He's got a fumble, he's got an interception in the red zone. Third and three. And Robinson waiting. And I think he's short. Mike Daniels hit him first. They're going to spot him about a yard short of the first down. They got to go, right? Well, he's got to understand the situation in the football game. You see Brady Hoke giving it the go sign. And go for it on fourth down. That's where you just can't dance and sit around in the hole. Sometimes that works, but when you need a first down, stick it up in there hard with power. He's a strong enough runner to get that first down and grind it out. Could be the ball game right here. Comes a blitz off the corner, dude. Robinson, first down. Tripped up, ball comes out, but they rule Robinson down and it appeared he was at the 43 yard line. Bernstein got a piece of Robinson. If he doesn't, Denard might still be running. Same play that uh, Devin Gardner picked the first down up on back of the last time they had the football on a speed option. Robinson just waiting impatient, then he burst through the hole. Robinson throws complete inside the 35 yard line as Kelvin Grady is third catch of the season right at the first down marker going to be a hair short so it's second and one Vincent Smith still in the game at tailback Robinson rolling out and he's got a crease Robinson inside the 25 and out of bounds at the 20-yard line. 
That's a 14-yard pickup and a Michigan first down. Starts out with David Molk, number 50, to center pulling. When you can do that, you get an extra player out on the edge. He seals. Patience, patience. Then you see the burst that all great athletes and playmakers have, the extra gear to get the positive yards. It makes you wonder why they don't do this every play, why they bring the other guy in and put Robinson at receiver. Robinson will throw, open man. Inside the 15-yard line is Grady. He breaks a tackle and takes it down to the six-yard line. It's first in goal, Michigan. This is what we talked about. There was no panic in mission. They have the ability to score fast with athletes and playmakers, and they have just more than Robinson. You have Roundtree. You have Hemingway. You have Gallon. And now Grady's been a factor. From the six-yard line, first in goal. Robinson with time, floats it into the end zone, flag down, it's caught anyway, touchdown. Kevin Koger pulls it in. And it should be on the defense and will be declined. Holding, defense, number 44. That penalty is declined. The play results in a touchdown. You see right here, Koger working back to the middle of the field on man coverage by James Morse. There, James Morse bit on the little outcut, and Denard Robinson does a good job of throwing the man open. That's not throwing to the man, but throwing to the spot to allow him to go and make a play. Michigan had a botched extra point on its first touchdown as Dilio, the holder, could not get the snap down. Let's see what happens here. This time it's there, and Gibbons puts it through. It's a one possession game midway through the fourth quarter. When he gets his seat, when he gets his feet set, when he has time, he steps to his target, he'll hit his target. Nebraska, Michigan, Michigan State tied atop the Legends Division, including today four games left in the Big Ten schedule. Iowa at 2-2. Two and two. Denard Robinson was 4-5 of five passing, including a touchdown to the tight end Kevin Koger on that drive. And Michigan back within a possession. They're down eight because of a botched extra point. I was not generating any pass rush with their four defensive linemen. They might have to start getting some type of zone pressures going. Here's Kanziri on the return for the Hawkeyes. And he stumbles past the 20 to the 24. And you see Michigan today not running the ball well and a lot of mistakes. Can the defense now stop Vandenberg? He's had a very good game passing, and he's on target to McNutt here. Ninth catch for McNutt, and it's good for about 24 yards and a first down. Boy, they have yet to stop him, and all it is is a three-step slant. You see, on a skinny post, actually, McNutt pushing upfield. Corner's given a lot of space, understandably so, expecting help underneath. Help never arrives, and then McNutt, again, not body catching, going out and snagging the ball. And I like the fact that Vandenberger hits him in stride, which allows him to make the transition from catch to run easily. Ninth reception, that's a career high. And Vandenberg keeps playing like this, looking at his numbers. He's going to get some consideration for all Big Ten. Throwing just four picks on the year, 18 touchdown passes. And third in efficiency, and he should have had a catch there, but Keenan Davis dropped it. That pass was on target again. It's second and ten. Well, they're just seeing on first down. They're getting a rhythm of what Michigan is playing defensively. Their corners are playing off a little bit. And so what, what do you do to force that, to get them to move up? You go to the quick passing game. And right there, Davis is wide open, and he's catching the ball in stride and still running. You know, Vandenberg has been sharp. He is from the state of Iowa. He picked the Hawkeyes over Nebraska and Northwestern. Remember, he was forced into action a couple of years ago when Ricky Stanzi got hurt and held his own against Ohio State on the road. Here's Coker finding a hole and tackled just short of the first down by Brennan Beyer. So it'll bring up third down. Do you give it to 34 again here, third and short? I think you keep feeding him, and all good backs will fall forward. And you're getting a good job of lead blocking, one by the offensive line, and also number 38, Brad Rogers, when in the ball game, has been very effective in springing Coker for the extra yard. Also look for the hard count here. And that's number 38, Rogers, your fullback. He's going to take you to the point of attack.
It's Coker on third and one, and he stood up. It's Kenny Demons who makes the play. We'll see where they spot the football. It looks like he's going to be just short. Fourth down, what do you do? Well, the point you do is you follow your fullback. That's what I said. On this type of situation, you don't cut it back. You watch number 38. He will take you to the point of attack, then you can play off of him and fall forward. You cut back, you lose your protection. Iowa has to punt after a false start when it looked like the Hawkeyes might go for it on fourth and one. Guthrie punting, Michigan coming after it. They bumped into him, no flag, and the kick is deep, but kept out of the end zone beautifully. Michigan will have the ball at the two. It was Sean Prater, the gunner, who caught it and saved it before it crossed the goal line. Field awareness and a veteran play by Sean Prater did not make the catch, but had the awareness to bat it back away from the end zone over the shoulder. It's a great job. And his partner on the other corner, Micah Hyde, with the downing of the football. So now Michigan has to go 96 yards. Trailing by eight points, needing a touchdown and a two point conversion because of the botched extra point in the opening quarter. Remember, Tucson is out of the game and Vincent Smith his replacement. Robinson in shotgun. He'll throw, it's caught by Hemingway, and he's out near the 24. Gain of 20 on first down. It's a 2010 version of the Michigan offense. Fake the read option and going with the slant route off the play action to Hemingway. Nice call by Al Borges. Well done. Two timeouts remaining for the Wolverines. Robinson to the air again. And that pass thrown into double coverage. There was some contact. Nielsen the tight end and Dilio the wide receiver. No flag. And it's second and ten. Now, I know this is not what we're seeing. Where Denard Robinson can become very effective running the football. If his receiver is not there on his first lick. Take a throwing lane and turn it into a running lane off the scramble. That's where you can get the big play. Has he scrambled once today? He's not looking to scramble. This is a design run. And Robinson trying to cut it back, but he did into a defender, Thomas Nardo, and he got about two. So now it is third down and long. Now remember, Norm Parker has not generated any pressure with just four men. So now you have to make a decision. Do you want to take a shot and blitz? The last time you blitzed, Tanner Miller was able to get the pressure on Denard Robinson. Good call for Norm Parker. Man defense. Robinson has time on third and eight, and the pass off the mark, and it is incomplete. It hit the ground. Tanner Miller was the safety in the area. It's fourth down. We'll see if Michigan goes for it. You put the football, Dave, right here. The ball does bounce. Norm Parker did dial up the blitz, but he dialed up the blitz playing man. He brought Micah Hyde off the corner. It's a nice job of Michigan picking it up. But excellent coverage in man to man. Now they only have two timeouts. They had to call a timeout on the last special team situation. You thought it was because of an alert fake there on fourth down. That's right? the only reason why I think you call a timeout going for a punt return. So you had to burn one there. So two left, and Michigan punts the football, and it's fair caught. There's contact afterwards. That could be a penalty on Odoms, but it's not. Fair caught by Hyde at the 36. They'll keep it on the ground with Coker. And he gets about four out to the 40-yard line. It's a good play on first down. Van Bergen with the tackle. Now, if you're Iowa, you let that play clock run down, and you probably snap the ball with three to two seconds left on it and use all you can. And what you're forcing Michigan to do is line up one-on-one -on -one with McNutt. So that might not be a bad time on second and four or five right here to go. Brady Hoke's got a headset on. Normally he doesn't yeah. wear a headset. Why the change here, you think? I think he wants to know exactly what's being called. Then he'll have the veto power to overrule it. Second down and six at the Iowa 40. You see what look at Vandenberg checking the play clock. It'll be a run play again to Coker through a seam and brought down right at the first down marker. Might be just short. We'll see that where they spot it. Now he's going to be short by a yard, so it's third down. 
Clock inside three minutes. Probably a little bit too far for a sneak. Remember, early in the ball game, Michigan was able to defend and stop. I want a quarterback sneak. You got the hot hand and the power runner, Coker, but this time, if you call Coker's number, you want him to follow his fullback into the hole, which he vacated Brad Rogers on the last short yardage play. How about 60 carries the last two games for Marcus Coker? Let's see if he gets 61 here on third down and a yard. He will. Left side. No! Spun down in the backfield. Michigan's D-line makes a play. Jake Ryan leading the way for the Wolverines. And it's fourth down and about two or three. Young Jake Ryan, take a look. Number 90 playing outside linebacker. Disengages with the block. Comes off. Demons to clean up. And it's about winning the one-on-one -on -one battles. We talk about offense changing the line of scrimmage and sustaining blocks. That time Ryan was able to use his hands inside, get off the blocker, and make a huge play for the Wolverine defense. Gallon is the deep man as Guthrie will punt here on fourth down for Iowa. And it's fair caught at the 18, so Michigan has to go 82 yards, needs a touchdown and a two-point conversion. They certainly have a dynamic enough player to get it done in Denard Robinson. But the last three weeks, he has been bottled up running the football, averaging only about 50 yards per game. In terms of throwing the ball today, he does have two touchdown passes, but also an interception. And the guy that's a, a game breaker also, we talk about John Tree, Hemingway. Gallon's also... A very good football player, not in the game, but Grady is, who's been effective the past series. The other question is, will Robinson scramble if need be? He hasn't today. It's going to be a run play, and Smith with a big gap off right tackle. Got the first down of the 30-yard line. The ball came out. Smith is still going. Nobody behind him. The whistle never blew. It's a touchdown for Michigan. What happened? And looking at it, he landed on a Hawkeye. He was never down. He put his hand down, but he landed on a player, which means you're still alive. Iowa stopped. Michigan kept going. Smith takes it 82 yards for a touchdown. And we're going to review the play. The previous play is under further review. Okay, he lands here. Is that the runner was not down and scored. Well, it looks right there like he's down. His right arm is down. The elbow has hit the ground. He looks down. The ball should be marked back. It's a good job of Smith of not giving up on the play. He lands on top of number 44, Morris, and you see the elbow go down. Right there. That's the elbow. It's down. Yep, he's down. For further review, the runner's right elbow was down at the 29-yard line where it will be first down for Michigan. Please reset the game clock for two minutes and 12 seconds. So 2-12, one timeout left, and the ball at the Michigan 29. Robinson to the air. And he's going to go deep. Single coverage down the sideline. And way off the mark, Roundtree was actually... Out of bounds as a freighter was defending him. So now it brings up second down and 10. A nice job by Sean Prater. Stride for stride. And I love the fact the way he looks and leans. Uses his body to force Roundtree out of bounds. Now Denard's not afraid to throw it up for grabs. He has a lot of faith and trust in his receivers to go win the jump balls. Roundtree is nothing. Prater shut him down. Zero catches today for Roundtree. Only 14 in the year, but still. He's a key receiver for Denard Robinson. Roll to the left. And now Robinson looking deep. Got a man, but he overthrew Roundtree. Might have been a touchdown, and Robinson missed him. Coming back, attacking Prater with Roundtree. Prater's been on him all day. Here's the man coverage. Roundtree <laughs> wins the physical battle. If you're going to jam at the line of scrimmage, you better be in balance. Roundtree did a good job of raising the hand so Denard can see him and just an overthrow. But if you're going to get up there and play physical press coverage, you better be able to win that battle because you have no help. Big miss by the quarterback for Michigan. Third and ten. Another roll to the left. 
And a short throw to Odoms. He breaks a tackle. And looks like he's got a first down before he stepped out at the 41-yard line. Clock stop, 142 left. And a timeout remaining for Michigan. And I keep telling you about the angles. Kirksey takes the poor angle. If he gets his body in front, he definitely stops him short of the first down. He dies behind him. Odom does a good job of spinning and gaining yards. Robinson with time to throw. Going deep again for Hemingway and out of bounds. Defended by Micah Hyde at second and ten. They keep trying to work the backside of trips. Now, if they hold true to form, what they'll do is now they'll run a route to the trip side. You see that on first down, they've gone to the single receiver side. Once the round tree, now they're going back to Hemingway. The one thing he's not doing is throwing the jump ball. He's throwing it long, so he's not wrong, or only his guy can get it, or no one gets it. Robinson looking deep, throwing complete in the Iowa territory to the 45 yard line. Roundtree with his first catch of the game. And Michigan still on the move inside a minute and a half to go. Now, if your safeties are getting depth, that means your linebackers have to get depth. If you keep everything in front of you, linebackers shorten their drops. Robinson hit him behind. Another pass play. Robinson again with time. Roundtree could not hang on, pass a little behind him. It's second and ten. 109 left. One timeout to go for Michigan. And again, you're for Iowa. You stay patient. Don't worry about the yards. Stay patient. Keep the ball in front of you and protect your back end. Deep is the deepest. Just stay patient with that. Don't dial up a blitz. Then you're more vulnerable to a deep pass. We'll see what they do. I like to see Denard Robinson also. He can still scramble with plenty of time. One timeout left. Last handful of plays have been plays by Robinson a throw again here and got a man wide open inside the 35 yard line is Gallon and they rule him out of bounds at the 32 so the clock stops with a 101 to go remember Michigan needs a touchdown and a two-point conversion to tie the game to keep in mind on that two-point conversion they'll probably go with a run pass option for Denard Robinson Something to look forward to if they do score. Ball on the Iowa 32. Robinson pumps, looking for Gallon, and out of bounds. 38 seconds to go in the game. Nice job by Micah Hyde. They tried to sluggo. Sluggo stands for slant and go. Micah Hyde had nothing to do with it. He's a little shaken up. They need him in the game. He's a good corner. And I'm calling it. I'm going to attack him again. I don't know if he's cramping or if he's tired. I know one thing. If I see a corner shaken up, I can match him up one-on-one. -on -one. If a new corner comes in, that's my attack point from an offensive standpoint. One timeout. Ball on the 32. 38 seconds to go in the fourth quarter. Here comes pressure from Iowa. And Robinson has Roundtree inside the 25 and a flag down in the secondary at the 12-yard line. He's short of the first down by about a yard or two. But again, the clock stops because of the penalty. Defense. Holding. Defense, number 44. Ten-yard penalty from the previous spot. Carries an automatic first down. And watch James Morse here, right here, number 44. It's a tough matchup for him with Grady, a wide receiver. He lets him inside. He grabs him to slow him down. It's a good concept in a run. They run a double slant to give Roundtree more room on this outside slant. From the 22, 26 seconds remaining. Robinson, and this pass is caught inside the 10. Rumji breaks a tackle, and Iowa finally gets to him at the two. Michigan's got to call a timeout here. You would think the clock will stop to move and get rid of the chain since it's first and goal. Do they spike it, or do they call a timeout here? They're going to call a timeout. 16 seconds left. So you would think you have two or three shots here with the ball at the three-yard line. Again, Roundtree is now the factor working on Micah Hyde's side. And Micah, you got, came up limping a little bit away from trips. There's running a little post-corner route. He comes back to the football. I love how he flattens it out. Good hustle by the Iowa Hawkeye defenders after Micah misses the tackle in pursuit chasing the football. Mm -hmm. Nice route, Dave. Instead of going to the corner, he kind of rounded it off and came back. And Denard Robinson has been on target the past two series. 
So now you have 16 seconds left. How many chances do you get at the end zone? And you've got Denard Robinson. So is the run even an option because there are no timeouts? Is it all going to be pass plays? It's an option if it's if it's a, with a pass option off of it. Now you can still run the football, but you have to hurry up and ground it. But to me, I get him on the edge. If it's not there, tuck it and go, or get out of bounds to stop the clock. And I get him outside a little bit. You have a quarterback draw, but remember, you have a little guy here as a lead blocker, so you might want to eliminate that from your play call. Ball on the three. No timeouts left. 16 seconds to go. Michigan needs a touchdown and a two-point conversion. Robinson will throw. And way off the mark. It was intended for Hemingway. 12 seconds to go. As man coverage, and they tried to throw the inside-out fade. The problem was when Denard Robinson on target, what's in line, Dave? His feet. That time he threw the fade away. Here's what I do. I get him on the edge. They have a rollout package with him. They give him a little bit of a run pass option. Or you're going to throw the jump ball to Hemingway, or you can possibly work the fade down here to Roundtree. Hemingway's a big time receiver, a strong receiver inside. Tough matchup right there. Robinson stands in the pocket, throws a fade back of the end zone, caught! Now they say incomplete out of bounds. Hemingway was not in. Seven seconds to go, it's third down. Now they're conferring. Let's take a look at this. Every play is reviewed. So even if the ruling in the field is incomplete, let's see. Hemingway. Well, that's a touchdown, isn't it? The ball's out of bounds. Though. Yeah, but his leg's down and he the caught it. The previous play is under further review. Looks like the he caught it. ruling on the field is that the pass was incomplete. Didn't it look like he caught it and his knee was down before the ball went out of bounds? Let's take a look here. Now remember it. Here's the ball. What a great effort right there by Hemingway. Again, the big, strong hands of the wide receiver. His knees down right there. Now let's see if the ball hits the ground. Does it move? Does the ball move there? And we we can't see the ball, which makes it hard for them to overturn the ruling yeah. on the field. Let's see from this angle. There's the ball. Knee down. The ball is smashed up against his chest. It does hit the ground. I think it's a touchdown, Chris. I don't know if he lost control of it or it's rolling around but what a tough call I mean, again he has to maintain possession and if the ball doesn't move even if it touches the ground and you're holding it it's it's a touchdown catch and boy it's hard to tell and mm -hmm. because the ruling in the field is incomplete you wonder if that's enough video evidence to overturn it mm -hmm. Dan Cameron our referee Jim Kemmerling does an outstanding job as a replay official After further review the ruling on the field stands as called. The pass is incomplete. Third down. So the reason he said it stands is because they did not have enough video evidence to overturn the ruling in the field. So Michigan with a third down, ball on the three, out of timeout. Seven seconds to go. Well, they've gone back. They've run that play back to pass. The inverted fade, the junior Hemingway back to back. They're lined up in that same formation. There's Junior Hemingway. That's been his go-to guy. Here's Robinson to throw. In trouble. Robinson running around. Throws end zone, and it is incomplete. There are two seconds left, though. One more play coming. Smith was the intended receiver. Fourth down from the three coming up for Michigan. Bernard Robinson, athleticism, keeping this play alive. Norm Parker dials up the blitz with man-to-man -man coverage. Smith working on Tanner Miller. It's a good throw away from the defense where his guy could make it. Again, if I'm Denard Robinson, if nothing's there, find the throwing lane, turn it in a running lane, and get six yourself. Could be the final play of the game. Ball on the three, fourth down. Robinson, end zone, broken up. 16. B.J. Lowry breaks up the pass intended for Roy Roundtree.
four cracks at it from the three. And Michigan can't get in. Iowa wins, and here's Quint. Coach, the goal line stand. What, what happened? That was just a great effort by both teams. They drove it down there. Uh, credit goes to them. Our guys really dug in. Yeah, there are times this season where late in the game you haven't finished. Today you finish. What was the difference? Yeah, you know, we've had our ups and downs, but I thought uh, our team really played hard today, every, every, every phase. A lot of energy, a lot of toughness, and uh, one thing these guys, they've been resilient all year, and that showed up today. There was a combination, James Vandenberg and Marvin McNutt today. You, you can see their chemistry. How do you best describe that? Well, you know, James is a great player, and I'll tell you, Marvin's gotten better with each uh, phase. He made a great third down conversion in front of our bench. That was a huge play in the game. You stay in the hunt in the Legends division. What's that like? I, I don't even know anything about it. So I just, all we want to do is win on Saturday. That's it. Congratulations, I'm not that smart yet. <laughs> And there, he's not kidding. There, there's a chance that Kirk, as focused as he is, doesn't even know what division they're in. He just cares about winning football games. Michigan needed a touchdown and a two-point conversion. 24-16, the final. Iowa wins it. College football scoreboard presented by Acura. Coming up next, this has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For Chris Spielman, Quinn Kesnick, our entire crew, I'm Dave Pash. So long from Iowa City. The Hawkeyes back in the thick of things in the Legends Division as they beat Michigan 24-16.